We had a family reunion this summer and all of our grandchildren came home. And oh, it was one of the most wonderful, wildest times I ever saw. And when I'd get tired, I'd say, oh, I've got to go back and study a few minutes. And I'd go back and lie down a few minutes and then come back for some more. But you know, I love those children. It was great. I've had this home for many years. And I've had a wonderful family that God has given me and my wife. And as I think back over the years, I'm in a state of thankfulness. Welcome, Franklin, back to Harvest. Welcome. Thank you, Greg. When you look at that old archival footage, uh, that was a pretty cool little motorbike you had there, by the way. What, what were you riding? Uh, I had saved up Greg all for two years. My parents went and buy it for me. And it was called a little, uh, by a company called Rupp, <laughs> out of Mansfield, Ohio. And I remember the day that uh, it arrived after I had worked two years for it. That was a, a, a big, big day in my life. When you look back at those old videos, what comes to mind? Is it sort of like going back in time to you? Were those days that, uh, does that make you sad, happy, a mixture of both of those emotions? No, I think uh, Greg's just thankful. I yeah. was just thankful for the home that uh, I was raised in, uh, for the parents, godly parents that loved God, uh, that shared not only Christ in the home, yeah. but they, they lived it. Uh, the, the Ruth and Billy Graham that the world saw on television, uh, they weren't different people at home. It was the same people. And uh, so I'm just thankful when I look at those old pictures. You know, for many people, your father, Billy, is like a larger than life figure. Would he ever come into your room in the middle of the night and say something like, do you have help? Or something like that. Would that ever happen? You know, he, he gave us a lot of space. I, I can't ever remember my father coming into my bedroom. You know, he just figured that was my room, that was my space. And uh, now my mother, that's different. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Daddy, I can't ever remember a time where he came in there. He was on the road a lot, wasn't he? And he was gone quite a One bit. One time, Greg, he was gone to Australia for six months. Wow. And, you know, people would say, well, how, how could somebody do that? Well, you have to remember, after mm. the Second World War, Yep. When we had soldiers that had been gone for three and four years fighting and defending mm -hmm. our freedom, and my father was just starting his ministry, he thought, well, how could we go halfway around the world and just mm -hmm. go for two weeks? Yeah. Uh, he felt that they were being a bad steward of the Lord's resources. So they, yeah. Now, you know, if he had to do it over again, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. But uh, back then, under those circumstances, right. he thought it was the right thing to I've do. I've actually heard him say, I think in an interview with... Greta Van Susteren, if he could change anything, he would probably spend you know, more time with his family. He would spend more time studying and less time uh, speaking, not preaching. Uh, he would get invitations all the time you know, to yeah. come dedicate this or, or go speak at that. And he wishes now he had not done all of that. Look at it, Go back to that photo that you, they just had up there. You see that photo there? You see your expression? You still have that expression today. <laughs> And this expression of Franklin, this is when he's about to do something naughty. He's going to say something or do something. You really haven't changed that much. Well, thanks. I thought, <laughs> I thought it looked pretty good. Look. We've known each other a long time. Okay, so Christmas in the Graham homes. Oh, what was it like? Would you get up in the morning? Would you open the presents in the morning? Would you open them Christmas Eve? How did it work there? No, we would, uh, Christmas Eve, we would, of course, uh, uh, my father would read the, the Christmas story. Oh, he did. Uh, every we, year he would read oh, yeah, it? Every year. Oh, and then uh, Christmas morning, uh, we would uh, have time of prayer mm. and uh, before we'd open up any gifts. Wow. We'd normally open up, we'd have, my, my mother loved Christmas. Uh, she got a big kick out of this. So the house was always decorated to the hilt. Mm -hmm. We had the stockings, and I remember one year I got ashes and switches in mine. You got uh, what? Ashes and switches. Ashes and switches. And, so, and, that, and you, what, why did you receive such a gift? Because I deserved them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of coming back to that expression, it's, you were kind of a, a little, you are a, a troublemaking little boy, weren't you? Well, I don't know if I was troublemaking. I had three older sisters that just brought it Running out Running from the cops <laughs> they, they, in your car, so the gate would shut behind you. That's troublemaking. Well, that, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I can't remember that far back. 
So, looks like your dad's giving you a little talking to. No, that's your brother Nettie's talking to. Yeah. And, uh, and then there you are holding the football, listening in. Okay. You know, it's funny. Your boys look so much like you looked, of course. And that grand resemblance goes right through the family. Okay, so he would read the Christmas story to you. What kind of a meal would you guys have? Like, what's a Christmas dinner in the Graham home for, at that time? Uh, well, you know, my mother was uh, born in China. Her, yeah. her parents were, were missionaries to China. He was mm -hmm. a missionary surgeon. And somewhere along the way, they developed a, <laughs> this, uh, I don't know why they did this, a oyster stew mm -hmm. for Christmas morning. I mean, I don't like oyster stew, period, and, and, and having it for breakfast. Uh, so my mother would have this oyster stew, and nobody ate it. Uh, my father ate it because he had to. Uh, we just rolled up our noses, and there's, yeah. but for lunch, you know, it was turkey and ham and yeah. all that kind of stuff, but that oyster stew business, uh, if for any of you families out there that want to try something different, have oyster stew this Christmas and just see how well it goes over. Good tip. So what was your favorite Christmas gift you received as a child? Well, you know, we lived in a rural area, and so our gifts were probably a little uh, unconventional. Uh, we usually got a gun for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'd go out in the backyard and shoot at squirrels and those kinds of things. Yeah. So that was kind of Christmas at the Graham. Yeah. yeah. So as you grew older, you did have your time of rebellion, we've mentioned. And uh, you did make a commitment to Christ to follow him. And you took over a, an organization uh, called Samaritan's Purse that was started by Bob Pierce. Bob Pierce. And the ministry began to grow. But did you have sort of an apprehension about being a preacher because your father's such a noted preacher? Did you want to maybe run this organization and not be a guy who preached the gospel? Or were you comfortable getting up there and preaching right away? No, I, ne I never felt um, in those early days that God was calling me to preach, Greg, because yeah. um, uh, why would I want to put myself in a situation yeah. where I'd be compared to my father? I could never be Billy Graham, and so why even uh, be in that position? So I was comfortable running Samaritan's person yeah. and doing the work. Uh, and our, our, listen, our desire has always been to lead people to Christ, yeah. but to stand up on a stage or a platform and preach the gospel and give right. an invitation. I didn't feel that calling really until about, oh, I guess it's about 20 some years ago. Yeah. And then I just felt that was something God was calling me to do. And if that disappointed somebody, or if, uh, if I didn't measure up in their eyes, that's tough. You know, if I was gonna preach the gospel because I believe that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation right. to everyone that's who right. believes. And so uh, I wasn't trying to be my father, wasn't trying to, to imitate him. It's just simply preaching the gospel because it's God's word and it's his gospel. What would you say in a nutshell is the gospel? Define the gospel. Well, uh, that God loves us and that he sent his son from heaven to this earth to take our sins. That he died and shed his blood for our sins on Calvary's cross. He was buried for our sins and God raised him to life the third day and he will come into your heart if you're willing to accept right. him and trust him by faith. Amen. That's the gospel. You know, one of the things I appreciate you, about you, Franklin, is not only do you preach the gospel, but as we collect these boxes, this is an evangelistic ministry. You know, there are, are relief agencies out there, humanitarian organizations. Then there are even Christian humanitarian organizations that maybe they do it in the name of Christ, but they don't necessarily present Christ uh, in their work that they do. But what I like about Samaritan's Purse is you are a great humanitarian organization. You provide relief for people all around the world, but always with a view to bring the gospel. And I think that's because you're called as an evangelist. And that's so important, isn't it? Well, Greg, we can give gifts to children all day long and put a smile on their face. Yeah. And um, what have you done for them? Yeah. But when you can give a gift, yeah. and we ask people when you pack a box to pray, for the box, and you just pray for the boxes yeah. that are coming tonight. But we also ask people, put your picture in there yeah. uh, and put your address on the back. We, we want not only to pray for the children, but we want the children who get the box to see who gave the box, and if they can, uh, to write back. And, and Greg, we had a first time that I know of that happened just about three weeks ago in our office. A young couple came and uh, to give some boxes, uh, and these boxes had been collected on their, their wedding day. Um, this little boy, Tyler, uh, seven years of age from Idaho, had um, packed a shoebox 20 years ago 
and um, thought that the gift would bring a lot of joy to somebody's life. And uh, a little girl in the Philippines got this box. And in, in the box was this picture of Tyler. He, he had a, a cowboy shirt on. He had his little lariat and a seven-year-old boy from Idaho from, a, from a, a, a small ranch. And on the back was the address, so she wrote him, but he never got the letter. Uh, about uh, 10 years later, she thought, I'm going to try Facebook. And a lot of Tylers came up, but only one from Idaho. And, but now that picture didn't look like him, because he's much older. Well, she asked to be his friend. And the next day, he got this Facebook page of some girl in the Philippines that wanted to be his friend and clicked on. And uh, it was him. And they began to have a, a relationship on Facebook. And they had a lot of things in common. They loved music and they did other things. And so he saved up his money, and he went to go visit her. And uh, they fell in love. And they are now married. Um, so I think that's the first time. We've had children adopted, Greg. We've had, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kids every year come right. to faith in Christ. But I think this is the first couple that a box brought so together. So Samaritan's first matchmaking. <laughs> a no, new I, ministry. I, I, no, that's a God deal. I'm not, yeah. I, I'm not that smart. So, I mean, I that's amazing. That. So they exchanged photos as little children ended up meeting each other as adults and now they're married. Well, he said that the, the joy that he hoped that that box would give to a child, he never right. dreamed that that joy would be coming back to him. Isn't that great? Her. Yeah, so that's something. So, you know, when we tell the people, put a photo of yourself inside of the box, I mean, th this really can make a difference. And you've had many children come to Christ, haven't you? Well, this girl who got the box yeah. from Tyler, because of that gift, she came to faith in Christ. Yeah. Her father came to faith in Christ and then right. later became a pastor. Wow. So, wow. Uh, That's incredible. So she, she wanted this boy to know what, what God had done for her mm -hmm. and her family. She, he wanted her to know uh, the changes that had, that had made in their life. Mm -hmm. But Greg, this year we have every, every box that we give out. We have a discipleship program that we offer mm -hmm. to the churches that help us around the world. We're in 110 different countries, mm -hmm. and we have these leadership teams in every country. And we offer a discipleship program. It's called The Greatest Journey. Uh, the first year we had about, uh, this was three years we've been doing it. The first year we had about 800,000. Mm -hmm. This past year we had like 1.3 million. This year we'll have 2.3 million kids in discipleship program around the world. It's a 12-week discipleship program. Wow. We train the teachers. We have a workbook. And then the, the kids have to memorize scripture. They have to say the scripture before their pastor. They have a little mm. graduation ceremony. And then everyone that graduates, we give a Bible to. But I want to raise up another generation, an army of evangelists mm. who are w kids, young kids, who are willing to share their faith with, with other children, and that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. That's amazing. You know, in the Christmas season, uh, with so many people busy, you know, the opportunities will come to share the gospel. You know, that family gathering, if you're the Christian in the family, sometimes people will say, well, why don't you do the prayer, whatever. You know, you've had all these opportunities to share the gospel, everything from news programs to meeting with, you know, prime ministers and, and dictators sometimes. You've been in a lot of amazing situations. Do you, Franklin Graham, ever get intimidated? Like, oh, it's just kind of hard to bring the gospel up. Or do you always just have this kind of boldness and you're ready to go with it? No, I think there are times you do get intimidated. Yeah. I mean, and of course, the, the devil wants you to get intimidated. So what do you do when you're intimidated? Right, well, well, first of all, normally you get intimidated when you haven't prayed enough. Yeah. Um, where someone kind of catches you off guard and, yeah. you, and then all of a sudden they're, they're in your face yeah. and they're being combative. Well, mm -hmm. I don't believe in your God. And, and I don't, how could you believe in a God that kills people? And then yeah. all of a sudden you find yourself a little bit on the defensive. Mm -hmm. But Greg, it's, it's, it's before you, I, every, I go on a program anytime. Yeah. I always just pray, Lord, um, help me because I can't do this on my own. Uh, yeah. So I just, it's a prayer, just help me. And if I can lift up your son tonight or today, then Father, help me to lift up your son. And that's just been a prayer of mine all my life. And, and God always gives opportunity. He does. And you always do a great job. If you've ever seen Franklin out there, this guy is fearless. He's as bold as a lion and he shares the gospel. And we're appreciative of that, and of your ministry and of your life. And of course, of your family. And, uh, and now 
So your father, of course, uh, is getting on in years, uh, but he's still walking with the Lord. He's looking forward to going to heaven. Uh, you've been preaching the gospel for years, and your son, Will, who we had out not long ago, is also out there preaching the gospel and doing a fantastic job. So, Well, Greg, we're, again, we're grateful to the friendship of the Harvest and the quarter of a million boxes that have come through Harvest. Uh, every, you know, every box is needed because every box gives us an opportunity to touch a child right. and to touch a child somewhere in the world uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. So again, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for your support. It's our pleasure. We're happy to do it. Well, we have a special friend now. Yeah. It's our, we're thrilled to do it. 